Okay, uh, so this is part two of uh, Make a Mobile Game in 60 Minutes. Uh, once again, sponsored by ChromaCoders.org, a club that helps inspire students to make their own video games uh, with other students. And uh, so where we left off was why make a mobile game? So basically, why make a mobile game? It's mainly because all a lot of people are now migrating from the web to mobile. So whereas a lot of people were consuming a lot of their stuff on the web now, now they're just getting it all off their mobile device. And so you even probably see this around you where people are watching movies, watching TV shows, playing their games, all on their mobile device, um, just because it's very convenient. And so if you even look at countries that are kind of ahead of most other countries in terms of um, mobile adoption, like Japan, what's happening is that even their major social networks are actually being um, accessed primarily through mobile. Uh, no longer are people accessing their social networks through the web, web browser. Um, and then you also look at companies like NG Moco, uh, which was a game company that kind of started up and was sold for $400 million. Uh, so basically, mobile gaming is something that's very popular. I mean, it's something that people who have mobile devices are willing to do. It's an activity that they're looking to do. Um, plus, it's an opportunity because when you're talking about mobile devices, it's not the company that has the biggest graphics necessarily or the most hardcore 3D graphics or all this other stuff or resources that wins. If you make a simple game that's very fun, very addictive, and works within the mobile game design space, uh, you can have huge success, as we saw with Blast Monkeys and Zoo Club. So it's a perfect opportunity for small, you know, um, aspiring student developers to actually make games. And at the very least, you'll get experience. Um, okay. So uh, let's talk about why you are the perfect person to make a mobile game. Uh, if you make a mobile game, um, for one thing, you'll be able to add it to your portfolio or to your resume. And I can tell you, uh, quite frankly, that will probably help you stand out more than anything else. Com having a completed project just puts you above like 100 times more of a chance to actually get an internship or a job than just doing schoolwork. Um, I was giving a talk at uh, University of Texas, Austin, and like some recruiter from Bungie was there and I asked her uh, in front of all the students basically okay how you know how would you value or how important is it to actually have a game done outside a class uh, to put on your resume and she was like it counts for almost everything so you know companies like Bungie most companies want to see students who are interested and in, like you know have a natural interest or inclination towards doing games or doing projects and doing a project outside a class is is a perfect way to display that now the issue though is that usually when you're using another tool it's so hard to complete the project in addition to doing your schoolwork the great thing about corona is it just makes it so much easier to do these things so that you will actually be able to do a project in a reasonable amount of time and it won't affect the rest of your life you know the rest of your schoolwork and everything else secondly the other reason to make a mobile game is that a lot of the skills needed to make a mobile game now are not taught in traditional classes. I mean, a lot of the technology has really leapfrogged what's being taught um, just in traditional game design courses and even traditional programming courses. I mean, the languages you're going to use, the design paradigms you're going to use, and even the distribution methodology is just so different than what, what traditional classes are introducing. So even if the game you make doesn't succeed commercially, uh, you definitely win because you have something that you have, first of all, the experience and uh, of actually making a game, which just gives you the ability and the confidence to actually make a game in the future whenever you want to. And you've built something that adds to your portfolio. Um, you know, it's also the reason why you're perfect to make a mobile game is because really mobile game design is not about, it's not like AAA game design. You don't have to make this perfect game that's going to take two to five years to actually make and then you release it and, you know, it better be really good or, or, you're, or it's over. What's cool about mobile games is it's about iterative development. You can release something that's really buggy, you know, half working, but you just keep on iterating. Get the feedback from the players who can give you feedback instantly on their mobile device and just keep on improving it. And that's what I did when I was working with uh, with Zoo Club, is that basically the first version was very primitive. It didn't even really work on Android. If you look at the, at the reviews on Android for Zoo Club, the first few reviews, you'll see that it's like one star rating because it was a completely black screen for most people since it was completely buggy. But what I did is I took their feedback, kept on iterating, kept on improving, kept on refining 
until finally it got to a position and to a state where it was fun enough and compelling enough that people were willing to play it and pass it on and share it with other people. Um, and that brings up the other point, which is that people care more about responsiveness than quality. Now, even Zoo Club right now, it does have bugs, but when people email me or, you know, they say this needs to be fixed, I show and, you know, other people on the Zoo Club team, we definitely work to actually improve the game really quickly. And so people recognize that, yeah, we don't get it right on the first time, but we're responsive. We're willing to actually change things. So they understand and they're, and they're more, they're more willing, willing to vest their time in, into the game. Um, and another cool thing is that since you can just release a game, uh, like say on Android Market, without having to get all this approval process and everything else, and you can just get feedback to see if the idea is good in the first place, and then you can refine things there. And finally, you know, it's about increasing quality over time. As I said, it's about iterative development. Um, you know, just get it out there, and then every week maybe you get a little feedback, and then you spend your Saturday afternoon or something just refining and doing another update. Um, Okay, and what's also interesting about these mobile games is actually too many people on a team can be counterproductive. So whereas AAA titles needed like 300 people on a team, you know, to make that huge game, with mobile games it's actually counterproductive maybe after five people to actually have more people on the team. You want to have a really tight team. You know, even a student group of two or three people would be perfect because once you have that team, you're able to... Um, you know, make a game that can compete with even some of the bigger companies because you're, everyone has that same constraint of that mobile space, of that mobile screen and everything else. So <coughs> you don't need a big team. And so even if you have a small team, you have a chance of making an awesome game. As I said, Tiny Tower on iPhone, which is one of the top grossing games on iPhone, is done by a two-person team. Okay, now let's talk about the mobile game design mechanics that you can use to actually make a mobile game. Uh, these, are the, these are the game design mechanics that are just obvious when you, you know when the smartphones first were introduced by Apple. Uh, these are the kind of the game mechanics that stood out. And one of them is the accelerometer. Um, and that's pretty much being able to tilt your phone left, right, up, down, whatever. And then you know maybe even use that as a controller. So if you're playing a game, you kind of, say a driving game, you can tilt your phone left and right to kind of move left and right. So that's one thing, that's one mechanic. The other mechanic is the touch mechanic, and that's really cool about these devices is that basically you can interface with the game via touch, and I think maybe that's why a lot more people are into mobile gaming and why it's expanded the market, because unlike a PC where you have to use a mouse and play with the game and, use, and even consoles where you have all these different controllers, touch is more natural for a lot of people. They just see something on the screen, they tap it, and they get feedback. And so touch is accessible. It's accessible for one-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, all the way to 104-year-olds, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So touch is important. And in fact, what's interesting is that we talk about touch. There are now games now on these tablet devices that are actually geared towards cats because maybe they can't use a PC or a mouse, but they can touch, they can touch the screen with their paws. And so these cat games are actually selling quite a bit. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to keep in mind. So touch is a, a compelling part of the mobile game design space. Then there's vibration, and I think that's another cool thing, is that these devices, they can give you feedback via vibration. Um, and so if you're doing a driving game, or if you have another game where you're kind of running into things or banging into things, the vibration can give you the force feedback that makes it more fun, especially for kids. Okay, so those are the mobile uh, game design mechanics. And then what I usually do now in the talk is tell um, students to get into teams of two or three people. And so hopefully, um, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you don't have another person, I would still encourage you to get into team, you know, find someone, uh, bring them in, in to watch this video, uh, you know, and uh, so that'll be the first step. Uh, just pause this video and uh, in fact, we'll just end this. We'll just say this is the end of part two of the talk and the next part will just be about um, forming your team and actually working on the game. So um, until then, thanks.